All right, uh, yeah, welcome everyone. Uh, this is No Bullshit Gaming Podcast, two and a half gamers session number 60. 60. Sharing actionable insights, uh, dropping knowledge from our day-to-day -day user acquisition, game design and ad monetization jobs. Definitely not discussing the latest industry news, but we are having so much fun. Let's not forget, this is 4 a.m. conference discussion vibe, so let's not take it too seriously. Uh, it's Jakub over here, uh, Felix, myself, Matej, and we have a special guest, CEO of Cost Games, Manuel. Hey, so Hi. we're going, welcome. We're going to talk about a topic that Vimo and Felix keep arguing about, and that's ANRs and crashes. Uh, what causes them and how ads are loaded and why is it such a pain and what else, whatever, <laughs> whatever else. Talk a bit about ASO as well, yeah, right? Maybe yeah, we should ASO. talk about that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, but first... Manuel, why don't you give us a little introduction of yourself? What are you doing? Uh, how do you pronounce your last name? Yeah, how do you pronounce yeah. that last name? Especially that because it's uh, you know you said you said it's challenging. Uh, yeah, it is, I, it is I, indeed. Um, it should be it should be okay for us to say. Krüter. So it's okay. it's, it's yeah. obviously like 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 a German word uh, that uh, went through some transitions coming from the Protanian tribe, which was the Russians, uh, the Prussians, <laughs> um, uh, back in the in the Middle Ages. So somehow it morphed into this uh, name. So just call me Manuel. Uh, I'm nice. CEO of Colossi Games. We have one game out since about a year, uh, Gladiator: Survival in Rome. Um, which just now dropped into early access on Steam as well. Um, so. Uh, yeah, I've worked with Felix together, and that's how we somehow meet. So, yeah, uh, you, you don't it. work with with Jakub or me, so I think that's the end of the podcast. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, we can, we can end here. <laughs> yeah, but I played the game; it's really interesting. Oh wow! It's like, like uh, what the fuck it, is with your mic? So, it, last episode it was really quiet. Now it's like you're fucking shouting. Because he mic. doesn't have a boom boom arm, and he's too cheap to buy one. <laughs> Even though we have nearly two thousand subscribers, he still refuses boom. to buy a boom arm. Boom arm is my arm. <laughs> Oh Tell all your friends to subscribe. <laughs> yeah, and your family as well. Have your uh, your son subscribed already? Katarina, subscribe. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, so I I saw the the LinkedIn post about Steam launch. Like, why are you so excited about Steam? Um, uh, firstly, because it's it's um, the first time that we actually launch on Steam. Okay. All of us come from the from the mobile sector. And, uh, um, uh, well, nowadays, um, you, you kind of want to have like more pl cross-platform experience, right? Um, so we, we need to get our feet wet and, and that's basically it. So uh, we need to, to make it happen and see from, you know, own first party experience, how that stuff works there and uh, not just, um, it's a free to play game on Steam, right? Yeah. So uh, that, that's obviously very, very different from, from all the buy to play products that are hyped up by PR agencies, etc. <laughs> we do not have uh, like uh, PR splashes or whatever. So um, it's really the dirty thing, the dirty business to try to grow. Um, Ooh, yeah, we love dirty businesses and, and yeah. growing in that in that, that way. So I guess we need to have you uh, back on when uh, you have more data to share from Steam as well. It's it's yes. super interesting. So are you leaving mobile because mobile is dead? No, 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 no. I love mobile. I love mobile. Uh, all, all the, all the, you know, doomy and gloomy people. Oh, mobile, 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 mobile. No, uh, they are wrong. It's uh, nice. still the biggest platform. Um, everything what players do is on a whim. You know, they act on emotions, and mobile is way more accessible uh, for this uh, than, than mm. on PC. Are you, by the way, considering your own client uh, parallel to Steam? In a way, to, um, you know, mitigate we... some of the fees. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Um, yes, but Steam is like, it, it gives you like a sort of free visibility. Um, a reach, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which, which is helpful to, you know, tinker. I mean, we, we launched an early access, right? We need to tinker like the control set. The pacing mm -hmm. is obviously different from, from mobile to, to Steam. Uh, you, you, need, you kind of need to strike a good balance there. And... Um, uh, pushing out the updates both on mobile and on Steam at the same time it mm. requires some technical um, knowledge as well, right? So uh, for, mm. for us, this is more a learning experience. If it if it, it will go tremendously well, okay, <laughs> be my guest. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Why not? Uh, also, there's it. this PC Google Play thing, uh, Android. Yep. 
that could be interesting, which obviously fucks uh, blue blue stacks in there. Oh yeah, blue stacks, <laughs> Nox, etc. <laughs> All of them are crying. Yeah. Okay, Wait, but was then Bluestacks bought at some point by Unity or so. But you, no, oh, no, I was no, I don't think so. I, I might be like just hallucinating here. Yeah, I never heard. I never heard about that. But um, we have uh, heard that uh, I've been called the king of organic downloads. <laughs> <laughs> no, jokes aside. I, I've, yeah, I've seen uh, you know like uh, a lot of your posts on LinkedIn as well, and um, and I even downloaded the game, and it was actually localized in Slovak language on, on, on App Store. I was like, oh, okay. So you're definitely uh, involved in, in any organic t- t- types of uh, activities. So any any ASO stuff that you can actually share that uh, you know help you grow organically, um, because I'm interested in, in hearing that. So what, what what was your prep for launching the game in terms of the, the ASO? So uh, one king of organics, I'm, I'm not too sure. That's, uh, yeah, that's Felix. You know. But um... <laughs> it was told to me, like, so yeah, it's not me <laughs> saying it. It was told to me by a Finn. And then I was like, okay. Uh, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Nice. I could guess who. Um, no, I mean, <laughs> our game has about like 90% organic downloads, right? Um, nice. Uh, and uh, so like almost 4 million. Um, yeah. so far and the one that I've been involved with uh, before uh, where I was a sole marketer it also had like mm-hmm. 7 million the first year or so nice. um, so and so the, the, the way to think about ASO is um, first of all you need to you need to split Apple and Google into, into yeah, different, yeah, yeah. different beasts right so Apple doesn't care about the revenue um, Apple cares about the experience on the phone Apple is ultimately a a hardware manufacturer and they want to sell their hardware. They want to sell the good experience of their hardware. Um, So everything there is geared towards conversion and uh, platform experience, basically. So they care about uh, review score. They care about um, Mm. the conversion from the search term to, to actually an install. um, And that's what you optimize there for on Google. It's a different piece. Google is an ad network. So when you open Google play uh, today on your, on your Android phone, uh, you will see, Ads, editorial content, like <laughs> events and whatever, ads, 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 um, uh, pre-registration, another round of ads. And then at some point come the organics, yeah, uh, yeah. which are automated app collections. Um, so <laughs> you cannot, well, you can buy your way into it with Google Ads uh, because Google Ads is the only one who can advertise there. Um, and you should, uh, I mean, Mate explains... It needs to be in your mix, and he's absolutely right because it's the the, the front page exposure. Um, but at the same time, uh, um, Google gives you a lot of opportunity to be like in similar app categories and in these automated app collections and stuff like this. Um, so there, you just need to localize your experience and uh, to uh, get into as many auto collection lists as possible that you qualify for. Um, however, Google obviously cares about yeah. much more, right? And how do you qualify for these out of the collections? And also like the similar apps. So there, this, there's this rumor, like if you have a certain uh, amount of downloads per, I don't know, a day or something, then you, you qualify for the similar games type of uh, uh, placement within the organic, which I have uh, no idea if it's true or not. So I, I don't. I'm not sure if uh, downloads per se play a very big mm-hmm. role there. Um, everything on Google, especially in these automated app collections, is uh, very user centric or user behavior centric. Hmm. So if you play that game and then you get suggested something that is actually similar by by gamer stats, meaning is it in the same category? Is it uh, targeting the same sort of keyword cloud? It doesn't mm-hmm. need to be the exact keyword, right? Um, yeah. So if you're an ASO practitioner uh, now, stop stuffing your text with your competition um, <laughs> yeah, brand keywords. names. Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't do much. It's 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 a keyword cloud that that Google draws from uh, with, with with machine learning, um, and then Google loves revenue. <laughs> I mean, they're a company. <laughs> Who would have said that? <laughs> wow. So, surprised. And, and, surprised. Yeah. And, and, and you know what, what? What Google loves more than just revenue? Revenue as quick as possible. So mm. um, the monetization design needs to be in a way that you monetize your user basically on day zero or day one. Um, mm. That's just the way the algorithm works. Um, and and then come like um, app health things. Um, 
which leads us uh, to the to the next big topic of today, I guess. Yeah. App health. That's a nice segue. What does Google think is app health? We're going to well, start getting into A&Rs, aren't we? Uh, we yeah, know, yeah, we yeah. do, we do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very quick, slippery slope here. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, so maybe some, some context I can just give here. So me and Manuel, we worked together uh, on ad monetization. I suggested some ad placements to improve, and you went on this hilarious rant about <laughs> ad SDKs, crashes, and A&Rs. And just to start off, and I'm hoping we can actually repeat that rant and actually record it, but just to start off super simple, like what are A&Rs, like why are A&Rs and crashes actually an issue? Yeah, so what is an ANR, uh, first of all? So uh, ANR means application not responding. Um, that like in Google's terms, it splits uh, between um, user facing ANR, that's the one that is important, and general ANR. Um, we will come to what the difference is. Um, so application not responding basically means um, the device does not react to the, to the input of the user anymore um, for a certain amount of time. Usually it's around five seconds. Um, so that can be prolonged slightly, but uh, five seconds is a, is a good thing. Um, so that affects everyone. It's normal that, that ANR happen um, on especially older devices because, well, games get just more sophisticated and get just more massive, basically, right? So, um, and why is that a problem? Because um, Google set... Um, thresholds uh, on how many sessions, um, what percentage of sessions uh, these ANR or crashes uh, can occur. And this threshold is 0.47%. Um, Do you know why it's 0.47? Like, well, or is that just arbitrary? arbitrary? Yeah. Okay. It's a mag magic uh, number. It, it. it's, it's a ma well, um, the official explanation is... Um, if you are above the threshold, you're in the worst 25% of all apps, which is a little bit disingenuous in my view, because you have, you know, a lot of apps there that have 10 downloads, 50 downloads. Yeah. Uh, that will not, <laughs> never occur, you know, and, and are in there, right? So, um, but everyone who is exposed or more successful uh, in countries that have, you know, a lower spec device penetration, hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and then then comes then comes a tinfoil hattery, right? I mean, uh, Felix already said I should be uh, you know ranting a little bit, uh, but okay, here's a tinfoil hattery. Now go back to what I said about the Google front page um, on the Google Play front page. Ads, 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 ads. Who does not care about ads uh, about ANR? Uh, ad monetized games? No, not ad monetized games. Um, um, uh, ad-driven games, sorry. So if you have an ad, the user downloads anyway. It does not matter. Um, mm. ANR, however, um, cause you to um, to drop, if you're above the threshold, uh, drop the visibility in, in organic rankings. So um, if you're a bad boy and uh, put a lot of SDKs in, and ad networks really want to have a lot of SDKs, um, you kind of, um, you know, set yourself up for failure um, if you are relying on organic traffic in, in the way that most mid-core games actually do. Hmm. Um, so. For hyper-casual, it doesn't really yeah. matter. Yeah. I mean, exactly. no one searches for the next... Um, New hyper-casual game. Yeah. Yeah. Twerk 3D... Yeah, <laughs> but let's just like so that's kind of building on what you said about ad networks, and uh, you know, if you're a bad boy and they crash it, like when it was a big issue for you. But just like technically, just before we get into it, like can you kind of just explain what happens when a user opens a game and what, what like the SDK loading process looks like right. and how ad networks usually screw that up or right. can screw that up? <laughs> so you you have your phone open, you click on the icon or tap on the icon. Um, then you send a signal basically to uh, to the operating system to uh, load a lot of activities. Um, so, and these activities are like, you have the game engine, you have um, your analytics SDK, you have um, your game assets for the first scene, um, which is why you should not make an open world game in your first scene. Well, you, you're kind of yeah. setting yourself up for failure there. Yeah, um, <laughs> your download size will be 10 gigabytes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
you know, <laughs> I mean, especially some Asian developers think like, oh yeah, everyone has just oh, yeah, 10 that... gigabyte free on their phone, right? So, and load everything up on this in uh, you know, open world game. No, um, so all these assets need to be loaded, uh, uh, sound, etc. Um, um, SDKs need to be initialized. Uh, contact uh, the corresponding server. Like, hi, I'm here. Uh, please uh, give me an ad to preload. Blah 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 blah. You know, all this kind of stuff. All of that happens in parallel. Foom. You know, it's like. But you have only a certain amount that uh, a phone can process um, at the same time. Um, so there you have your first um, choke point. Well, pro- choke point. Choke point. Yeah. Yeah. Your lo- loading time is ten, ten, well, ten seconds. It's, it's kind of on the lower scale. If you have like millions of SDKs, it can be like a minute. So basically, yeah. like w- when you start off the SDKs, they load ads. And I remember you said something about dual cores. Sometimes, like these SDKs only loaded on one core. Was there something uh, around well, that as well? It's, it's, it's about thread. Um, like you have, of course, like m- the main thread in Unity that, that handles a, a lot of things. There's, I think it's getting a bit too technical for your audience. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's oh, go. Okay, okay, okay. I want to know. We want to know. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not a programmer know. either. I, I try to weasel myself out uh, to not give you uh, the, the <laughs> absolute. Oh, right. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, but what happens then when like a user closes a game or app like what's the unloading process like because you need so, to yeah i'm 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 jumping ahead a, a little bit to understand why why there's a, such a big difference because if you yeah. unload like all the stuff needs to be uh, unloaded again from your phone and causes some some issue so when you when you um um open the app and you have this initialization process of all this stuff as a programmer you know that is happening and you can space that out go from parallel to some sort of sequential um um, ordering, so to speak. You can order SDKs not to load in the first whatever seconds. Um, you can have not an ad placement uh, in your tutorial scene where you have most of the users uh, coming in, right? Uh, I'm, I know, Felix, uh, it, it pains you to hear that. And especially for, for all that, uh, you know, ads on app open initiatives that uh, we hear um, <laughs> More, yeah, more Google, often. Google pushing the app open ads. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> um, so, uh, but as a, as a programmer, basically you you have uh, the choice of like how to in, in which order to load kind of the things. On closing, you don't, and it's not just the closing. Also, like on pause, the most ANRs occur um, when you you tell um, your app go on pause. For various reasons, there's there's a WhatsApp message coming in. Uh, a mommy is calling. Um, you are uh, you are in the middle of um, a purchase event, yeah, which gives that overlay, so that the game progress stops. Um, you are asked to do a review uh, for the game. Again, the the game stops. You have the on pause event um, in, in in Unity. All I'm talking about is Unity because I have no idea what's what the hell is happening in Unreal, right? So um, so. You, as a developer, however, do not know when these events occur for the most time. You don't know when mommy is calling, right? Um, and the same thing um, on um, on app closure. You do not know really when when that happens. So um, everything is unloaded at the same time. And it's not just unloading. It's like every SDK is, is like ET. They want to phone home. The session is ending. Um, here is, here is um, you know, the save game needs to be put into the cloud. Um, all these kind of things happen suddenly. And, you know, you have then the confirmation, you know, you send it out, you have TCP, so it comes back. And uh, for this, you need to wait. And um, all of that just compounds into one big blocking mess Mm. and then the operating system is like why is this app that is on pause consuming such resources right so five seconds are gone fuck off you know no no input anymore (laughs) yeah it's like go away go away Um, and that's 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 what 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 anr essentially is now you have some ways to mitigate that um, so when you ask a user for a review uh, or for the purchase event or for um, uh, instead of the user just, you know, swiping the app away, so to speak, uh, so, so it, it closes, it uses actually the back button, um, then you can make like a confirmation window um, and 
steal a little bit of time, unload mm. something already in this little mm. time uh, that the user needs to, you know, press the button. So yeah, who who the fuck presses the back button? Jakub, you are the Android user. But he uses a computer. So like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, true. Okay. You <laughs> you usually swipe anyway. <laughs> So, yeah. but true, yeah, yeah, you can buy time. Okay. Yeah. So, it. so before actually, uh, like, going into maybe how developers can reduce A and R and crashes, like, I'm just wondering, like, why does iOS, like, do they care as much as Google, no. or is it only Google? It's only Google. I never heard about A and R's on iOS. Exactly. It doesn't. Do you know why that is? You, is you, you just... do have crashes, of course, but yeah. um, I'm not sure if app health actually matters in in in, in iOS that much, other than generally being uh, uh, maybe consider for featuring or something you don't want to have mm. a, like mm. crashing yeah, a broken game. right yeah featurings um, aren't yeah, but in, as Google valuable it happens, yeah. it's definitely part of it yeah so okay let's get to the question here so what's the yeah. best way developers can actually reduce a and r's and crashes and I spilled like, all what the should you do yeah. <laughs> but what should you do if you're above <laughs> threshold like i know i know there's some yeah. game developers that don't care about the a and r threshold and yeah, they, they should go nuts right um first of all yeah they should care because they should care for a good user experience right um that uh, the, the the pride of the programmer should dictate that already to de deliver a good uh, product in itself um but a and r um like I said, it, it matters only uh, if you're about the threshold, um, if you have organic traffic. Most apps, most downloaded apps, usually do not care uh, about organic traffic whatsoever. Um, it goes back to the ASO, by the way. Um, mm. um, you, you need to think of how do you sell the game to your user? What, what does the user search for? Um, typing into the search bar, what image does he have in mind? Uh, to come to that game. So I'm not sure how um, the 1000th iteration of uh, any kind of match three game would spark a user. Or today I typing in match three and yeah. I fully expect a new game to be presented. No, that happens with uh, with ads, right? So, and then you bypass the, the entire problem, so to speak. It's, it really just concerns um, app developers that, that uh, rely or want to have organic traffic. What was the question? Yeah, like how, how, uh, what, 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 what people can do. The, um, yeah, what we can do. Right. <laughs> so reduce the number of SDKs. Ooh, um, that will no, make no, Felix no, no, very no, no, unhappy. No, 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 no. <laughs> but SDKs does not just mean add SDKs, right? It, it, it can be... Well, like, usually, usually does. It's, 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 usually it's the biggest the amount most. of them, yep. sure. Um, but sometimes people think, oh, no, I need to have two sources of truth uh, and in mm. implement two analytics SDKs, um, for example. So if you have two analytics systems, um, uh, both of them phone home, right? Mm. Both of them on, on every pause event uh, uh, need to, you know, feed the database with, with any kind of game events. Um, then you have Firebase as the big elephant in the room, but there's mm. like smaller niche um um, as the case for Crashlytics, for example, they also mm -hmm. record a lot of stuff. And um, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit bad for the Google people, but they brought it on uh, themselves. Um, Firebase, we in the last uh, update uh, prior to, to the one that is currently live, we excluded Firebase. Ooh, to see ooh, what is wow. actually the impact of Firebase itself, of the SDK. Because everyone is using Firebase. Turns out our ANR rate dropped by 0.1. And 0 0.47 is the, the threshold, right? Yeah. So yeah, pretty big. a quarter pretty of ANR is just gone. And we're like, wait, let's BA test that. Put Firebase back in, in with, the, with the recent update. Foop, it goes back up. <laughs> and you're like, hey, Google people, what are the fuck are you doing? Me? Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> I mean, so there's... there's it's amazing. You're, I don't know. God knows how many people find the smart ones, fix that shit. It's <laughs> like crazy how they come up with uh, with a threshold. Um, then yeah, twenty five percent is just <laughs> optimize the whole And the second God. biggest offender in terms of of uh, SDKs, uh, sorry for name dropping, but it's Google Ads. It's it's a Google Ads SDK. The AdMob SDK. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So you're like. How the hell is the one that defines the rules is also the one that, you know, makes it really hard to actually adhere to the rules. 
wow. that's like <laughs> insane to me. I love Google. They, they they earn us the money, basically, right? They give us the visibility. Um, I, I I just don't really, uh, you know, understand how these mm. products are not that optimized in such a big organization, and that affects so many um, developers. What, I mean, what's they your could theory? Make what's so your, much your, more you know. money, essentially, um, if they just fix their shit. You know? what, what's yeah, your theory on that? Well, like, why do you think that is? Is it is it really hard to write SDKs, tinfoil. or is it really boring, or like, what, what is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's tin, it, it's tinfoil time there. Uh, it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. love it. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, uh, maybe. Um, so first of all, again, Google is a very big uh, corporation, uh, and in a corporate environment, uh, approval processes uh, are are crazy. Um, people are getting, you know, uh, promoted every two years, are not very familiar with the product, or, you know, stuff like this happens. Um, but then there's also, if your, your half of your front page um, of the store is fed by AdMob, um, <laughs> and you make money off this, and their A&R do not matter, I leave you guessing. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the thing. Right? Like, if, if you I, I do a, not believe uh, this is like intentional. I don't. I, I honestly yeah. do not believe this is intentional. It's just there is no no real incentive inside um, to matter of priority. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you if you look at Google Groups, um, uh, every developer under the sun already has has like complained about this, and uh, only receives like uh, blah blah from from first level support, and nothing is ever being done about it. Right. Um, of on the contrary, um, ad networks um, are incredibly quick to to acknowledge. Okay, here's something wrong uh, with the adapter. Uh, here's something wrong in the SDK. Um, yeah, we we see what we see what you mean, and uh, thanks for the crash lytics, etc. Um, we will roll out an update uh, very very soon. That's what I usually tell uh, the people I work with because, like, usually ad networks, they always reach out like, "Oh, we have a new SDK. It's going to improve performance. You need to update it right away." Never do it in the first week. Like, you're yeah, taking yeah. the risk then, like, because <laughs> like sometimes you update it and it's just causing crashes. There was an issue with a Unity SDK a couple of weeks ago, and then like you couldn't close rewarded ads, and it's like, "Oh, sorry." Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Amazing, great experience. Yeah. Like, did if, they, if did you they not? Uh, you could not, or they just wanted to spike their CTR. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, hard to say. Hard yeah, to say. hard to say. What? Hard to say, right? Yeah, but That's I want it. to say, like, if you if you tell some developers out there, uh, like, hey, so do you know what A and R is? Or maybe like marketing uh, people, <laughs> no, they have no idea. Yeah, they have no idea. Yeah, um, because, just you know. just just to 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 give you uh, like the severity of this. So uh, uh, around the time. Two months after launch, so we were we were clocking in at twenty five thousand downloads a day, and whoop, whoop. we implemented the ad stack. Before we only had Unity unmediated uh, because um, yeah, because someone with Felix told you, oh well, you should put more more. I ad I, 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 <laughs> I I do not confirm or deny these allegations. Um, <laughs> 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 so. In April, um, like end of April, we, we implemented like all these networks, um, um, uh, put it on, on uh, Ablav and Max, uh, etc. So um, virtually the day that thing went live, we crashed from 25,000 downloads a day down to 15,000. Next day down to 10,000. It's like, boom. And, and it's, like, it's like a perfect cross, A&R up. And yeah. Uh, yeah, however, yeah, now the problem it. is, if you want to get back to Gloryland, um, you know, below the threshold, etc., the rolling average is what counts, right? Oof, so you yeah. have to have no. thirty days um, of, you know, be a good boy, you know, prove that you are not, um, you know, and only then you you regain slowly the visibility. You That's do not so frustrating because you know it's based on the average, right? You said you're twenty five percent like of the worst offenders. That's based on an yeah. average, and for thirty days, like that's yeah. oh, yeah, it, it is really hard. It is hard. I mean, it's great for UA managers. They have more jobs to do then. To yeah, I'm not complaining. <laughs> I'm maybe okay. maybe Matthew is behind all of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So if you put on the tinfoil hat, you think it's actually on purpose so they can spend more money on the UA networks? But, no, um, I don't know anything about yeah. the ADR. Yeah, 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 yeah. Confirm or deny. <laughs> buy some new users then if you lost your organics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> yeah, from from uh, from a platform point of view, um, um, it's not too far off to think that way. That there is some sort of uh, disincentive. Let's put it this way: to to treat this problem as super high priority. If you can, you know, not only make the the, the inner purchase revenue, but also make the ad revenue. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. You also talk to me a lot about slow code and like what happens if you have slow code combined with like ad SDKs. Like, can you wait, talk wait, a bit about, wait, about wait, the effect? Wait, wait, um, wait, wait. What, what is slow code? Well, let's tell you that. Yeah. What I, does it mean? Exactly, Felix. What does it mean? You Which probably mean like uh, unoptimized code. Yes, exactly. Unoptimized oh, okay, code. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, things that, that, that happen that makes your device slow, essentially. Mm, yeah, okay. um, so a lot of when, when we are blaming SDKs here, etc., um, this is not everything. Like programmers can also be fucking lazy, and um, <laughs> artists can be, you know, just creating scenes with ultra high poly or whatever, and all of that matters. So um, you need to look at home first. Um, what mm. can you do there? Um, and um, use the really, really good uh, tools that Unity actually provides um, uh, for, for performance and um, memory analytics. Um, so it will give you a lot of hints what you can do. If you never ran these tools, do it now and you will be surprised. You will be surprised <laughs> how amazing your tech stack is. <laughs> so, All right. Okay. Definitely do that first before, All you right. know, I, I, I do not, you know, you, you cannot run around uh, with with 2%, 3%, yeah. 5% I saw even uh, from, you know, some friends. And our rate, and then we're like, oh, Google. No, 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 my friend. This is, yeah. you know. <laughs> wait, 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 wait a This second. is on yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. So, so I think we're like, we're 30 minutes in now. So now time for the million dollar question. Probably right. why we also invited you, because this is the question I mean, Remo have been fighting about for six months. This is the million dollar question, right? Okay. We argued at length about this. How hard is it to add a new ad network SDK? No bullshit version. Yeah, no bullshit version, please, because, you know. Well, it depends on which ad network no, no, SDK. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Um, how, in terms of actual difficulty, almost zero. Uh, I'm 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 pretty hey, sure wait, wait, that wait. any kind of experienced admon person even could do it it's himself um, because all the ad networks provide code snippets and uh, uh, most of the time you even just uh, connect it to an uh, to the to the uh, uh, mediation adapter right so all right end of episode let's finish there it's 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 literally <laughs> a tick of the box however however oh, now no, comes no, my no, part oh no, <laughs> oh, no. so some... my popcorn. <laughs> Some networks um, uh, make you jump through hoops to even get uh, signed up. And you get like a, a response from their biz dev team, uh, you know, after some time. And then you need to give, uh, be given credentials for the platform, etc. So that takes time. Um, and uh, it, it is sometimes more the smaller ones, uh, granted, or the, the, the Google Ad Manager uh, networks usually have this kind of process. Um, but more importantly, it's also like a business thing. Um, so if your ad revenue is, let's say, not where some of the recently discussed on this pod uh, uh, games um, level, but more like mm -hmm. what, what, the, what, what the broad strokes basically in the story yeah. is, right? Um, so you have an accounting thing. You, for, for every single uh, source of income, you need to account it for every month. You need to, you know, make your VAT declaration. You need to do all of this. It's just creating additional headache. You have the business point of view. Uh, like, um, do you really want to complexify your stack um, with with ANR uh, impacting um SDKs, etc., um, for another hundred or two hundred? Um, dollars. I'm not sure about that. Um, you know, if if you risk something, and then risk, you know, losing organic traffic on the other side, that's a very very big decision. Um, so, um, full disclosure, Felix asked me implement this, implement that, and I'm like, oh, let's yeah. hold our horses here a little bit. <laughs> um, simply because of these, like, 
the difficulty is on the business side. It's not on the on the actual implementation. implementation. Side. Yeah. Once yeah. you have a mediation uh, um, um, service, whichever your preferred one is. Yeah. What I heard, what I heard as well, like uh, uh, integral has this thing, when uh, when you have a monthly revenue, uh, you need to go to the uh, to the, <laughs> the tool, you need to go to the dashboard, the to dashboard, prove to claim, it every yeah, month, to it. To claim yeah. the money. Otherwise, and when they, they don't send, pay you, yeah, yeah, when they send you the invo- a email, you need to do it in twenty four hours. If they, if you don't do it, then it's it's gonna be for next month True. revenue. <laughs> True, uh, fiber does the same. Um, <laughs> it's like you have yeah, 48 I'm hours. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Vangel, I'm not quite sure if we ever claimed the oh. Vangel. Please send me my money. Um, <laughs> yeah, please. If you listen, um, to I, please send I, money. I all this money <laughs> because it was so sl- uh, so so little amount basically, and we we kicked it off at, at that point. Yeah, it's different amounts for different uh, networks. Right. Yeah, like, okay. everything from two fifty to a grand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Mm. Um, that it, it just creates complexity, really. Uh, so, so yeah, Felix, you basically need to project the additional potential money, and then you can see, like, oh, well, it, this is interesting, and this is actually worth us implementing that SDK. I think we've had a couple of these discussions as well when well, I was working with you, right, Manuel? Like, uh, yeah, we had a couple of those. Like, uh, maybe, maybe <laughs> let me <laughs> offer a, a little bit of a different view how I see it. Okay. Uh, I think I haven't asked you anything. Really. <laughs> No, yeah, let, yeah, let, yeah, let me just asking. let me just go a little bit. So he was sitting what, what, there for thirty minutes waiting for his time. No, 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 no. <laughs> so what Manuel said is, is great in like you know this utopistic reality when even Felix can implement the SDK immediately because he can do the snippets and everything. It works just like charm. But in the real world, this is done by programmers. And programmers are usually doing features on your team, which means you need to pretty much shoot yourself in the foot and slow down your feature pipeline because you're offsetting the programmers to now do the dirty SDKs that Felix wanted and you won't get your update as soon as you want it. So this is usually the the case, in my opinion, when I was talking with the teams that somebody from the programming team, which they probably don't like at all because they never either done it before if you don't have it or they hate it to do it because why they like, you know, they want to get back to their features, whatever they were coding before, and they need to dedicate the time to do it. And then something doesn't work suddenly. (laughs) <laughs> and the process gets more and more complicated. So, so they start to talk with these third-party sites with Iron Source and everyone and troubleshoot the whole thing. And something is now two two weeks from three days and so on and so forth. So, so this agree, was for me the, with the that, biggest Mano? problem. Do you agree yeah. with that? You yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- th- this team. is real. This is real. Th- this is reality, not that utopistic yeah. thing that Felix will code in your SDKs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never said I could. I'm a blonde boy. I can't code. Never said I could. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a it's, it's like a management could. thing, right? I mean, uh, you you come to your to your to your uh, most paid prize horse in, in the stable um, of you know stuff. I mean, programmers usually are uh, relatively far up, and you tell him <laughs> implement this. Okay, first time he does it, then. You come to him, disable this, and he's like, "Am I working for the paper bin, or what is this?" Um, you know, it's <laughs> there's there's a natural rejection of mm. a bullshit task, basically. If you do mm. not know the outcome of anything, the first time you get away with it, the second time uh, you you have a lot of convincing to do um, that this mm. actually is a good idea. Mm. Yeah, and and only then comes the problems, and you're now the culprit of those problems because yeah. you force your programmers to put shit into your game that's now crashing <laughs> and making you just, you know, just community it always, riled up. Like, and it, everything. it always crashes. It doesn't always happen. Like it's not yeah, like only ninety percent. Yeah, 90% oh, of the time. I can imagine like there were like dozens of daily meetings on like each month. Like oh, the game is crashing again. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah it's this SDK. We we'll kick it out. <laughs> Well, but you know, like Jakub, you should you should then educate your programmers, like why is this a good idea and how much money it can. I'm make. not saying it's a bad idea. I'm just saying that in the real world, it works like this. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> Top well, you, you now make... we are recording this, so you can yeah. you can show the video around. You know, like, <laughs> we we show on both sides, <laughs> right? It's like, do you uh, do you currently exclude any like devices from showing ads completely because they're just like not good enough to see ads? Yes. Yeah. yes. Um, so first of all, you should anyway maintain a, a healthy uh, device exclusion list on on Google Play um, for just games that cannot realistically run your game well. Um, 
instead of dumping down the experience for everyone, it's better to you know just kick out yeah. uh, uh, most of the older devices, um, and then you can you can set up either direct exclusion um, lists, um, even like in, in terms of UA, um, you can target uh, uh, just Android 12, as Matei, I think, uh, suggested last time. Yep. Or, um, um, or you, you, you can make, in, in some platforms, you can even make device exclusion lists. Um, and you can do it a, like by programming, right? You, you just do not show that there is an ad available for a user that uh, runs a device that meets the device criteria in general, but is known, uh, you know, uh, to, to be coming from a device that is uh, really, really bad. Um, so uh, since since everyone gets gets their, uh, their, their share of name calling today, um, I also want to shout out to Xiaomi that never updates their own um, device catalog uh, on OS with the newest web view version. Um, so when you when you look into the device uh, analytics, out of the top twenty devices um, uh, that that are culprits of ANR, the highest you know winners on this list, not really winners, um, are Xiaomi devices. Redmi directly mm. Xiaomi. Uh, I think Poco belongs to those. Um, and that's that's even even like flagship models from like three years yeah. ago that theoretically do have enough RAM. Um, but um, so WebView is a Felix. Do you know what WebView is? Wh what it does? I don't know. Okay, so when you when you call an ad basically in the in the game, um, you you stream it basically in right, and that happens inside uh, so called uh, uh, well, it's like a browser on your on your on your phone. So at the browser version, if that is not updated, you call on some older browser version that needs to now enter some compatibility mode to stream the content of the ad into your phone. So the more there's a discrepancy of the, mm. the, the origin, it's like when you, when you stream, right, uh, you're, you're, um, you deliver in a certain uh, bit rate and... Um, Stowage version of browser. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you see, what's, and that's the same thing that happens there, and that causes um, lockups, that causes ANRs, right? Because it, it needs a lot of buffering in, in between and, and stuff like this. So, um, and it is not in the interest of smartphone makers to update Android components. However, the game developers cannot, from their app, call to update basically the an OS component, um, operating system component. Right? So um, if they run an older WebView version, um, you, ca you cannot educate your user to do that. I mean, you, yeah, sure, you can go to your user and say, if you have problems with ads, go into the Google Play Store, search for WebView and update that version, please. Sure, you can do that. However, realistically, users come to play. They do not come to maintain their device. Right. No, so they will do that. Yeah, and uh, and and then you have you know some sort of uh, incentive of the smartphone makers uh, that um, at some point they just discontinue the support for a certain OS version, and if the user does not um, upgrade that OS version to the to the newest one, you are stuck basically with that users. Um, so all we can do as developers is then basically target those and say no ads for you, sir. <laughs> No ads for you, sir. Yeah, no, no rewards. For you, sir. Yeah, no, I no guess, rewards. I guess we already did a bit of naming and shaming. You said go Google buy, was... go, go and buy ad uh, 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 blocking, you know, in, in the game. Yeah. So you get the rewards, but don't have to endure the ad. Yeah. Everyone should do that anyway. Yeah. So. yeah. That should always be an SKU. You should sell as an IAP, <laughs> in my opinion. But uh, so you already named and shamed Xiaomi, <laughs> named and shamed uh, Google. Any other SDKs that you want to name and shame that you think is the worst or any horror stories you want to shame? Like now is a good time to get it off your chest. I love all of them. Okay. All of them somehow make make money for us somehow, uh, help us uh, you know pay our dear employees, um, help uh, uh, you know create game experience. So I come not from a place of hate. I come yeah. with a call to pay attention to this. this is a real problem, right? Um, this this is what, what what needs to be understood. Everyone um, uh, is generally trying their best usually and if it's just a thing out of focus or you don't have the context then um 
it's it's good to be reminded sometimes uh, to you know do some prayer. So, um, but I, I would I would think the ones that I named are the ones that are most impactful. We are currently mm-hmm. investigating a little bit more into into uh, Unity, so we exclude Firebase and use mm-hmm. um, Embrace as um, uh, analytics stack. It's a little bit more detailed. Um, so uh, we we we, we look at all the threats and uh, we we make basically captures of uh, what happens on a technical side just beco- before like an ANR happens just before a crash happens and then you you get some good idea of um, how to space out things um, how to mitigate things and uh, yeah ultimately it's uh, uh, sorry felix show less ads uh, has quite some impact um, yeah. however that being said most of these devices come from um, from countries that, let's say, make not that much of a difference to your ad mm. ARPU. Is also the so. fact that you have an open world game where you have quite a lot of like things being loaded also part of the issue, right? Sure. Yeah, that definitely plays a role. Okay. But I mean, you, you can have a small scene. You can have like a very closed world and uh, mm. have just unoptimized art. That's why I said earlier... Um, do your homework first, right? Look where you can optimize your own assets, your own um, whatever you load into the game. Just you know, strip it off the SDKs and make a test version and, and let it run a little bit, um, ideally in soft launch. Um, um, and look how <laughs> ideally your game in soft launch. <laughs> bare bones, right? Yeah. 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 And- yeah, how do you structure like the team capacity around implementing and also upkeeping the maintenance of SDKs? Like, is that the programmers or QA or like how do you go about that in Colossi? Uh, the, so the, the the real thing is about uh, programming work here. Um, the 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 QA can, um, well, given the task, um, you know, investigate this close and try to force himself into situations where on the device this thing would occur. So you will have a number of test devices that are really on the lower end of the spectrum um, to, to, to make it happen. Uh, but ultimately, normally QA people just report something that a programmer then needs to fix anyway. Um, and the programmer usually needs to be um, um, you know, smart enough to, to understand what happens in, in, in which um, order uh, inside the code and uh, by, by, by the user journey, um, how to fix things. But senior QA people might be able to even tackle yeah. some of it. I, I work but, within yeah. that team that was exactly doing like this, that senior QA people were able to handle like 90% of these things only afterwards the programmer was called. Yeah. Reema, do you want to ask the last question? I know you, uh, you're very keen on this one about the capacity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you mean the choosing one? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. So the question is, if you had to choose, would you implement either a new SDK or put the capacity into a new game feature? Why and when? And what would be the factors that are, you know, forcing your decision? Money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> no, but it's like, yeah. It is. I mean, yeah. how do you pay? No, how no do you fucking pay the salaries? Yeah. How do you pay the salaries? Yeah, with the retention, it's, it's always like this. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, let's not let's, let's not go there. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. It, uh, no, it, come on, uh, this is this is a, is a real question um, that every business owner or, or product manager, or whatever uh, producer, needs to needs to answer. Like. The feature that I am currently advocating um, and harassing everyone, you know, to to approve this, etc. Does that bring money to the company? Does that advance the game significantly? Not just first order, but also like in terms of second order effects, right? Um, um, like if that feature, on, only that feature enables other stuff um, versus, uh, you know, tinkering around with ANR, then it's like, it's a gamble. Right. Mm. If you ever fix ANR, it's a gamble. Uh, maybe you will never drop below the, the, the magical threshold unless you sacrifice all your ad revenue, which makes your admon person very, very unhappy, probably. Um, probably fires him, to be honest, as well. Yeah, but, <laughs> if, you know, I wouldn't care if he's unhappy if the game makes more money on IIPs and have more organics. Absolutely. Then, the, you know. What if the admon has three kids to feed? Yeah. <laughs> that's not, yeah, that's, that's not uh, un- the problem. <laughs> Yeah, that's not my problem. It's unfortunate, but like the, he will, he or she will find another job uh, wherever he, you know, is necessary. Yeah. It so. also has a little bit to do with like capacity uh, of the of the of the people that you have access to. 
actually is, right? Like yeah. if someone yeah, never did a certain feature, yeah. you are kind of maybe pick the low hanging fruits first. Yeah, uh, no, especially course. if your runway yeah. is target, uh, you know, in danger <laughs> exactly. somehow. Yeah. yeah, but I would I would say like the feature side of it is pretty much the same regarding the risk because you know yeah. you implement a lot of features retention move shit revenue move shit it took yeah. you two months and so what yeah <laughs> maybe yeah. that sdk was a better option after all <laughs> yeah 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 but that's you know that's your decision to make you always yeah, have exactly. uh yeah a set of um information that you can make the decision based on and that's 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 what you do it's already a luxury that you can choose <laughs> yeah, to be honest, yeah, true. yeah, yeah. Like so, sometimes you 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 have put out a game that, by all you know, best estimations, will never do anything because it's in the in the wrong genre. Because it's uh, you you do not have uh, the right people that care about uh, distribution, uh, meaning uh, UA people. You do not have enough <laughs> uh, capacity um, in, in in your economics design. Um, uh, maybe you you just build a, you know a free to play multiplayer um, ten versus ten shooter game. Yeah, well, good luck, good luck, my friend. If you you know just raise two million uh, on VC money, well, the VC can already write that off as soon as he uh, wired that money out. Um, but I mean this this is this is reality. And then that studio yeah. has to deliver, right? Um, they they got the two million for 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 this thesis. We can make it happen. Yeah, you will not, um, because your problem is the marketing. Your problem is your unmonetizable um, real time content in PvP, because you know otherwise pay to win <laughs> is the death of any yeah. kind of multiplayer game. Um, so, and then arguing should we implement an ad SDK or um, you know? Yeah, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't matter actually. Yeah. It does, it yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. To go deeper. <laughs> So, so if, uh, if you if you have the luxury to choose, uh, uh, you know, do, do I release a new map or uh, like that that or like a live ops event or whatever um, that will probably make this amount of money, or you have an ad network that, uh, according to best estimations of your admin uh, person, will deliver another ten percent. Uh, well, well, that's a your best value. admin person it's will give you decimals, ten point forty five percent always. <laughs> I wish. Always. <laughs> yeah. I wish. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. No, I think with uh, you know, with that in mind, uh uh I think that's it. Yeah. That wow. was amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. This was no great. Problem. No problem. Yeah. I will I ask Felix on yeah, I will ask Felix on, on Saturday like uh what uh, what are his takeaways. <laughs> um I can I can actually uh, as as bonus content uh, for for uh, uh, viewers of this I can drop a link um in under the video or you put it in the show yep, notes or something, the show notes. Yep. On, of of a GitHub discussion that is actually done by by my CTO right oh, nice. Um, nice so um there there is a lot of actually data from us um, regarding ANR and uh, traces, etc., where other developers have chipped in already and there's been some Perfect. information. Oh, that'd be great, that. please. Yeah. So, and, and some some attempts on how to solve things. So, um, nice. Mm, well, super amazing. constructive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even, even better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Manuel, for coming. Uh, thank you, uh, everybody who, who listened to the episode and please keep subscribing. We, I guess we are very close to 2000 subscribers overall, which is amazing. We don't care about the numbers, but it's, it's kind of good. Good, to, good to know <laughs> that you, you actually like, <laughs> thank you until next time. Cheers. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.